Hey, and welcome back to another video. In this video, we're going to be continuing from where we left off in the previous one with the color select widget. So in this video, we're going to be setting up the functions, code, as well as the save game. This video, much like the last one, the method comes from the YouTuber code like me. I will leave a link to his YouTube channel down in the description. So with that, let's get started. So we're going to be working in the body widget the one that has the color that we set up last time so from here we're just gonna make a couple of changes real quick so by the bars for the saturation under the style normal bar image just here by the image we need to add the saturation material we added for the normal hovered and the disabled i forgot to do this in the previous video as well as for the luminance so just change this going on with that so head over to the graph so we set up this function in the previous video we're gonna head over to the function we're gonna set up a couple more functions so the next function we're gonna set up is a is going to update the saturation based on the color wheel so here we're gonna set up update saturation slider so this will update the the color this the blue section over here based on whatever on wherever the selector is so from here we're gonna i guess rename some of the sliders to make it easier slider saturation and then this will be slider luminance just so it's easier to find as we're working on it we're supposed to drag in the color selector and then from the color selector look for get value and then from the return value drag off and say distance 2d the values are 0.5 and 0.5 from the return value drag off and look for the multiply the multiply value will be 2 and then from the multiply drag off and look for a clamp float the values will remain as is and then from there we're going to drag in the slider saturation from the slider saturation we're going to drag off and say set value the set value function and from the clamp connect that to the in value and then connect the execution pin and then that will be it drag off comment over everything and then update saturation slider color so that will be that we're going to compile save and then we're going to create another function this one is going to be update update color saturation and then we're going to drag in the color selector as well as the selector the slider saturation and then from the color selector drag off and look for get value and then from the gear value we're going to drag off and look for a multiply oh no sorry not multiply a subtract we're going to subtract 0.5 and 0.5 and then from the subtract drag off and say normalize 2d from the normalize 2d we're going to drag off and say multiply and then from the bottom pin for the multiplier we're going to right click on it and then split strut pin so we can get the x and y we're going to use it in a moment from the multiply out pin drag off then add and add and then switch the pins so it's connected to the bottom free up the top one the top pin and then it'll be 0.5 and 0.5 and then from there we want to drag from the color selector all the way to the end and then say set value and then the in value will come from the add and then the target is the color selector and then we want to connect the execution pin to that and then for the bottom part the slider saturation drag off from there say get value from the get value clamp float it will remain as is now actually we're going to change the minimum value to 0 0.001 from the return value we're going to drag off and divide we're going to divide the value by two and then we're going to set the x and y based on the value that comes out from there and then that will be it for the update color situation add a comment and then update color saturation compile and save and that's it for this function the next function we're going to add is to update slider colors we're going to name it update slider colors 
and then we're going to add an input to the node add an input the input is going to be the hue it's going to be of type float and then we're going to drag in the slider saturation as well as the slider luminance sorry uh, can't speak the slider luminance and then we're going to drag off from the slider saturation we're going to get style and then from the get style we're going to drag off and then break the style and then we're going to click on that and then in the details under appearance we are going to hide the normal let me just make this a little bit bigger so we're going to hide the, the thumb image all the thumb images as well as the bar thickness so we just deselect those we don't need them we only need the bar image and then from here you can drag off on either pin and then look for get dynamic material and then we're going to duplicate this three times each one connected to a pin and then from there we are going to drag off from one of the pins and look for set vector parameter value connect the execution pin to the node and then the perimeter name we're going to update is the right color so make sure it's spelled exactly the same and then you're going to connect all the pins to the target because we we name them all the same in the material the color on the right hand side so regardless of whichever one it is it will update the right color the color on the color named as right color so we're going to do this for the luminance as well you can pretty much just copy this section and then duplicate it Control v connect the slider luminance to the target and then take from those three pins and then also connect those to the set vector parameter value target and then that will be it for this one and then we just need to add one more thing right click and then look for hsb to rgb Take the return value connect that to the value and then the hue will then be connected to the input hue and then the values for s is one v is one and a is one and then we're going to compile save and then this is for this function and then now we're going to head over and create another function this function is the color select itself this is the main function we're going to rename this as select color rename color selector so then this will be the main function so in here we're going to drag in the color selector hold control drag it in from the color selector drag off and say get value and then from the get value drag off and look for a subtract and then from the subtract drag off and say make vector 2d the values are going to be 0.5 and 0.5 and then from the subtract we need to add the function vector to degrees so hold in, drag in the function vector to degrees connect the output from the subtract to the vector connect the execution pin the target will be self and then also from the subtract drag off and then look for a vector 2d length we're going to use this in a moment first we're going to do the functionality for the vector to degrees so from the degrees drag off and then look for sin we're going to look for the sin degrees and then we're going to duplicate this two more times and then before each one we're going to put an add so add and then duplicate that connect the top pin to the degrees connect the out pins to the other two sins and then the value which we're going to be adding is 120 and 240 this will be the degrees to replicate the material for the color selector and then from the top sin drag off and look for a clamp float and then duplicate this two times connecting the value to each sin the values for each one will remain the same at one and zero and then drag off from the top clamp float and then say make vector and then connect each clamp to the pins and then from the make vector return value drag off look for a multiply and then each pin will be 
which will basically be multiplied by itself. And then from the multiplier, we're gonna drag off and look for a lerp, lerp vector. So the values here, we're gonna leave as is. Now we're gonna work on the vector 2D length because this one will be used for the alpha. So from the vector 2D length, drag off and look for a multiply. We're gonna multiply this by 1.5. Drag off and multiply and look for a clamp float. From the clamp float, we're gonna look for a one minus, or rather just look for a subtract and then connect the clamp to the bottom pin, free up the top pin, and then put a one. And then we're gonna drag off from the out pin, look for power. The power value will be five. And then from the power, we connect this to the alpha for the lerp vector. And then we're gonna drag in the function update slider colors. So drag in the function update slider colors, connect the execution pin, and then from the hue, drag off and look for RGB to HSV, and then connect the return value from the lerp to the in color. It will add a conversion note, and then we're gonna drag in the slider luminance. Drag off from the slide luminance, say get value, and then from the hue by the RGB to HSV, drag off and then say hsv to rgb connect the saturation and then we're going to connect the get value from the slider luminance to the v leave the alpha as one that will be that for this section and then moving on we are going to drag in the sports car port hold control drag in the sports car port from the sports car port we're gonna look for get mesh from the get mesh we're gonna drag off and look for get material. The material we're looking for is the body. The body is set at number two. And then from the return value, we're gonna drag off and then say create dynamic material instance. The index number will be two. The target is the mesh from the sports car. Connect the execution pin. And then from the return value, we're gonna drag off and say set vector parameter value the parameter name you can find in the content vehicles sports car materials body and then the m sports car material so you open up this one and then you head over to where the you head over to the top section there's a part that says metal parts tint this is the color. This is the parameter value that controls the color for the sports car. You need this one. Select it, press F2, copy it. And then we're just gonna hit apply and save and then close this. If you're using a custom, a, uh, a custom vehicle, then the equivalent to the metal parts tint that we're using here would be the which would it be it would be the node connected to the diffuse albedo it should be a vector parameter in order for this method to work if not then you should convert it to one so with that we're just going to go here by the parameter name and then control v and then for the value you get the value from the hsv to rgb and then we're gonna we're gonna add a redirect node and then from here we're gonna drag off and say promote to variable this variable is gonna be called body color. Set that over there. And then from the body color, we're gonna drag off and then say create save game object in the BP save game. From the return value, drag off. Do we have? We should have it. So if you have it, the save game, hold alt, drag it in, connect the execution and the return value. And then from the set save game, drag off from the blue pin and then say set color body, the variable we created in the previous video. And then this one will be this one over here. So you can just drag in the body color and then set it over there. And then from the set color body, drag off and then say save game to slot. We can pretty much use the same slot name for the other one because we're gonna remove that code anyways. So that one was body, body save not mistaken and then the save game object is the save game drag it in and drop it on the pin and with that that is everything here we're going to compile save head over to the event graph and then 
just move this a little bit. Then the functions we're going to need is if go click on the color selector, we're going to need the on value changed X, the on value changed Y, we're going to need the slider luminance, on value change, slider saturation, on value changed, and then we're going to be connecting the functions through here. So the update saturation slider, I'm going to drag that one in, and then that one will be connected to the color selector X and Y. So we'll connect it like that. I'll just move this up. And then the update color saturation will be connected to the slider saturation, connect it over there. And then the color selector will be dragged afterwards, and then it will be connected to the luminance, the function updates saturation slider, and then the update color saturation. So that's how that looks. Let me just add a redirect node here, make it look like so. So that is how this is going to work. Let's see if it works. Compile and save. Head over to the level. Save all. Play the level. Going to head over to the paint. Body. We now have the value. And if we take the slider. Hey, post recording edit here. Um, in the video, you'll see that when you play in the edits, uh, the color selector doesn't actually change the color of the car. That is because the luminance slider value is set to zero. So zero is black and then one is one has color. So we'll fix that um, heading to the material, not the material, heading to the widget, select the luminance slider and then in the details panel and where it says value, you're gonna see it says zero. So just turn that up to one and then compile and save and then everything should work properly. So back to the video, head over to the sports car and then in the load game function, in the load game, we need to come and change out some of these. So you can pretty much move all but this one and then just delete everything. And then from the BP save game, drag off and then say get color body. And then from here, we're gonna drag off and then say set color body and then connect that there and then connect the color body and then we're gonna right click look for get mesh down at the bottom get mesh and then from the mesh drag off and then say get material and then the material index will be two then from the get material, let's just move the wheels load out the way for now. Then from the mesh, I'm going to drag off again and then look for create dynamic material instance. Connect the get material to the source material. Change the element index to two. Connect the execution pin. And then from the return value by the create dynamic material instance, drag off and then say set vector parameter value and then the parameter name will be the same as before the metal parts tint the value for here will come from the set body and then after the set vector parameter value connect that to the wheels load and that will be everything so now if you play in the level and you go over to here and then if you move it around you can also see the saturation value changes depending on how close you are to the metal okay i think i may have messed up the materials here by saturation this should have been white in actuality so let's just go and change that so that was a mistake okay saturation the left color should be white so just apply and save that and then if you play in the level now again, we go paint, body, we select the color, we change the saturation. So the luminance is working, but the saturation is not. It's updating on the, but not on the car itself for some reason. Okay, we need to fix that. That is color selector, okay. 
Just move this out of the way. We're gonna drag in the slider saturation. Pull control, drag it in, and then drag off and say get the value. And then hopefully this is gonna solve the problem. I hope. I'm gonna compile, save, and then play the level, hit paint, body. Okay, so now it should be working. Let's see if it's white, it's orange. Okay, so that solved the problem. Um, seems I just forgot to add this part over here to the code. But that is pretty much that. So now we're gonna do that for the wheels. So what we're gonna do for the wheels is, okay, before we do that, let's actually go in here and then go to the designer. And then, so the previous previous method is gone. Double step graph, event graph. And then we're just gonna delete all this code cause you don't need it anymore. Just delete all that. And then take this. This is now the new code. I just put this over here and it does look a little bit better. Let's fold. Then we're gonna compile and save and then we're gonna do the same for the wheels. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna duplicate the widget we just created. Make sure it's selected and then hold control D. And then this one we're gonna rename as what do we call it wheel? We're gonna and then we can delete this one. Yeah we won't delete this one. Just force delete it and then in the newly created widget open it and then dock it to the top, head over to the graph, in the functions, in the select color function, we need to go and change some values. Maybe get material connected to the sports car, get mesh, material is three, in the create dynamic material also three, and then in the save game, also we need to change the variable. So delete this variable and then drag off from the redirect node that's still left over. Say promote to variable and then this variable we're gonna call it wheel color and then connect the execution pins and then just um, check out this set in body color and then from the save game drag off and then say set color set the color wheels connect the execution pins and then drag in the new user variable the wheel color drag and drop it over the pin. We can delete the body color because that's in a different widget. And then we're gonna change this to, to wheels save. So we're gonna overwrite the other one. And then that is pretty much it. We're gonna compile and save and then head over to the sports cost. And then we're gonna recreate this for the wheels. So we're gonna delete this and this. Delete that, move that out the way. So then from the cost to BP save game, drag off and say, get color wheels from the mesh drag off and say get material material three from the mesh again drag off and then say create dynamic material instance index three connect the return value from the get material to the source material connect the execution pins and then move the engine of the way the return value for the create dynamic material instance set vector perimeter value and then the value is the color wheels the perimeter name you can also find in the wheels and then you can actually also use the um, material instances because anything that's exposed is pretty much going to be here so for the wheel it's going to be the base color one you just open up this material real quick that would be this one over here the base color 2, I'm not sure what it is, but it's, it's this one over here for this one. If you're using a custom vehicle, once again, it will be the one connected to the base color. You need to promote it to a perimeter, a vector perimeter. So we're gonna close that and then say base color 1. I was going to go change this in the, in over here by the set vector perimeter in the select color function. Almost forgot. Base color one, compile, save in the sports car. And then after this, you can connect it to the engine, the engine load function. And then we're gonna compile, save, head over to here. Then we're gonna go over to the widgets, 
because we need to go and make some changes to the paint widget so here by the wheels it's no longer referencing the wheels because we removed that one so we need to redo just remove the add to viewport by the construct look for the wheels and then from the return value we add to viewport and then that will be that compile save and then we're gonna go test out see if it works so we're gonna go over to the paint wheels and as you can see it now works as it should the saturation works the luminance works as you can see there's a, there's a, there's a slight floor with the um with the weight setup is that when it's white it doesn't update to white that's because the white is it's not really a color it's the center point then the power exposes it so much that it becomes white so it's not gonna update it as that just gonna um, leave it as whatever color it came from but you can create white in that particular manner and then also the second floor is that whenever you reopen the game so you put it as blue so you left the cursor over here so if you close the editor and then reopen the editing go paint wheels it's gonna restart in the center point again as well as the saturation and the luminance wherever the default value you set for the widgets that's where it's going to start off from but it's not going to interfere when you actually um, select the color and then save the color it's just that whenever you come back to the widget it's it's going to start um, back at zero every time but that that's not a problem so yeah with that that's that brings us to the end of this video and until the next one